I am a warrior. I'm just a woman, a teacher, a mother, and a daughter. A warrior in verses, recited in sympathetic arenas, a packed house full of friends. No need to sell tickets or check them in because just like me, you are all warriors seeking the same. On the front line every day, waiting for the pool to blow to signal the return home. But I'm just a woman, a teacher, a mother, and a daughter. I am a warrior. Na au ma kua mai kala hiki a kala kau, mai ka hoku i a ka halawai. Na au ma kua i a ka hina kua i a ka hina alo, i a ka kau i kalani. O ki hai kalani, o we kalani, nu nulu i kalani, ka holo i kalani. E i a ka pula pula a o ko ka o hana nu uhiva. E malama o ko ya mako, e ulu i kalani, e ulu i kaho nua, e ulu i kapai ai na o Hawaii, e ho mai ka ike, e ho mai ka ikaika, e ho mai ke aka mai, e ho mai ka mau popopono, e ho mai ka ike papa lua, e ho mai ka mana. Okay, my kai, mahalo nui. Mahalo. <coughs> mahalo nui for that. Um, that actually, um, Pule Ho'ululu, if you guys didn't know that that's the name, it's called Pule Ho'ululu. Sometimes it's Pule Ho'ola'ola, Ola, but both mean the same. Um, it actually is one of the best chants to describe how one sets up their sacred space. And uh, one of the things that Haumea does for us is actually set up that sacred space for us, that ability to tap into the potential. So I'm going to start my talk with uh, a query, a question to you all. You know, one of those, hey, ui, hey, ni no, hey, ui, aku, ana, au, ya, o, ko, okay? <coughs> Who is Haumea? Okay, and then we'll ponder that for a little while. We'll think about that for a little while. And as I'm going through my PowerPoint presentation, which I'm so glad there's a part you guys are gonna focus over there and not over here, because if you don't know me, I would rather set my hair on fire than actually stand in front of you all and talk. <laughs> so this helps for that, uh, that nervousness. So. Um, you will all ponder who is Haumea while we go through this PowerPoint presentation, okay? And so, and then we did Na'au Makua, so that's another thing we're going to ponder for a little while, okay, as we go through this um, discussion. So, you know, when we come to these things uh, and you have a lot of people with mana in one spot, you know, there's a lot of heat that's going to get uh, created by that. It's going to get really hot in here. And um, the best thing about that is it puts you in a very uncomfortable position. And if you look at Hi'iaka's story of her uh, coming into her womanhood and into her mana, that's one of the things that is constant in that story, is that she's always put to the test in uncomfortable situations, okay? And um, we don't necessarily enjoy being in those uncomfortable situations, but once we come out of that, we, we, we've grown into a whole nother person. And so the person who does that for us is Haumea. Okay, Haumea is so important. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through the PowerPoint presentation. I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself, but uh, you can wing it, find me on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eka ava eke akua, eka ava eke akua, e aina o eke akua, e aina kini na mano a me ka lehu o ke akua, o ke akua i ka poloa, o kini o ke akua, lau a me nuhune ke akua, mai ka hiki na a komo hana, mai ka la kau a ka la komo, mai ka ko o lao, mai ke kai i kona, mai ka paa i luna, a i ka paa i lalo, mai ka ho o ku i a ka halawai, e halawai a pau e ia ka ai ke o, Ea la he ava, he ava nana pono nana heva. 
he uli pono, he uli hewa, he ola, he make, hua ina ke ola o ke kanaka, o ke ola nui, o ke ola loa, au ke akua, ola ku aloha, ola no. A mama, ua noa, lele vale. E a ke awa, e ke akua. He ai nau e ke akua. He ai nā kini nā ka mano a ka lehu o ke akua. O ke akua i ka pō loa. O kini o ke akua. Laua menehune ke akua. Mai kahi kina. A ke komohana. Mai ka lā kau. A ka lā komo. Mai kai ko o lau. A kai kona. Mai ka paa i luna. A ka paa i lalo, mai ka hookui, a ka halawai. E halawai a pau, e a ka ai, ke o e a la he awa, he awa nana pono nana hewa, he uli pono he uli hewa, he ola he make, hua ina ke ola o ke kanaka, O ke ola nui, ke ola loa, au a ke akua, ola ku ua loha, ola loa no, a mama ua noa lele vale. And then we all put in lima twice. Okay. So, <clears throat> and when we put in our limas, it has to be in the upoho style. Okay. And upoho or kilipoi poi is another word for it. Okay. And what that is, is you're cupping it because um, we're representing Haumea in her um, honua form as the earth and also as her lani form, which most people don't know that she actually has uh, atmospheric uh, kinola. Okay, so when you do it, you, you have to have that, that sound. Okay, and see, we make the earth, women, that's our job. Okay, we create our own honu. Do you know that the uh, Ieve is uh, one of the old and ceremony name, ceremonial names for the Ieve that we're born in, the, the sack that's around us, uh, is also called honua. Okay, so um, when I say uh, we create honua, that's what I'm talking about as well. Okay, so what happened just there through those lines of our chant? Um, this actually is a chant that um, you can find in actually a few um, newspapers and um, stories. <coughs> but mainly it's the story of Haumea and she's actually here on this side of the island. Oh, I just had one big woo. And she's down there, down the <coughs> Makai of us. And um, she sees up in the skies because that's what she can do. She is related to those uh, atmospheric gods. Her um, kupun are actually in the atmosphere. <coughs> And uh, she sees in there that there are signs that Wakea, her hubby, is in big trouble. She knew it just by the way the clouds were moving. And so she turns to her kahu and she asks her kahu to actually um, uh, do an ava ceremony for her. In one story, the kahu does it. In another story, she does it herself. So the, um, that's one of my things I'm going to uh, um, wrap your brain around is women do, do, Ava ceremonies, we perform Ava ceremonies. Okay, we do. <coughs> so in one of the stories, it explains that she takes the Ava that's already been chewed, and what she does is she kapukais it. Okay, and kapukai means you take, you take something, whatever the something is, it can be you too, and you dip it in salt water. And once she does that, then she's allowed to take on the task of uh, creating her, her world through the Ava, okay? So in one story, she's looking through the Ava and then, uh, you know, creating the Ava, doing the chant, setting up, setting up her boundaries for sacred space. And in the end of that, what she does is she looks into her bowl. You know, I, I brought props. <laughs> okay, she looks into her bowl and then she sees uh, that the Ava is swirling on one side of the bowl. So in the chant, she says, if it's on this side, uh, it is he ola he make, okay? So if it's on this side, it's, it's ola. If it's on this side, it's make. So she looks and she looks and she sees. So she's reading, she's doing vanana. Uh, and ana ana is, exactly what she, is actually what she's doing. 
And if you look up in the dictionary for the word ana ana, it does not mean black spooky ooh. Okay, like they like they've portrayed it to be. So we're gonna cut those chains. Let it go. Okay, the word ana ana actually means to vanana your ike. It means to have a divine inspiration. Okay, that comes from Haumea. Okay, so it swirls on the side of Ola, but it sort of is not swirling strong. And she knows at that moment that she actually has to book it on over to uh, the other side in Kalihi and save her, her husband, Wakia. Okay, so that's her story. All right, so. We're going to go through these, uh, each line um, individually. Okay. Oh, by the way, I'm real casual. So if you have questions, just ask it right away, because then I'm just going to go on with my bad self and just keep going. So, and then I won't remember what I, you, oh, you know what you just said earlier? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. So, so catch me, okay? Catch me. Okay. All right. So the first thing she does, okay, one of the very first things that Homia does after she calls upon all those who are the in their elemental forms. See, the, the idea of akua, yeah, for Hawaiians means anything that has something that man cannot do himself, him or herself. So the wind is akua, the flowers growing are akua, our kupuna who have halad are akua. Okay, we are ha akua sometimes, okay? Just depends. All right, so the first thing she does is she sets up her sacred space. <coughs> okay, she sets up her sacred space. Mai kahikina, where is kahikina? East, always starts in the east where the sun rises. Okay, so this is uh, kumukahi. So she begins by laying her foundation. Ake Komohana, where is that? In the west. Okay, very good. So she has a, a boundary that if we were to look at it, okay, this is my, uh, like, I'm not going to quit my day job, yeah. So this is my little graphics. Okay, so if she, she does the horizontal movement, right? Okay, so she splits the earth in half. And one side belongs to the east, and the other side belongs to the west. So in other words, you have to be grounded. You have to know where the sun rises, where the sun sets, where everything rises, actually. The moon, the sun, the stars. OK. My kala ko. OK, so she sets up her horizontal already, yeah? the, the idea of the east and the west. My kalakau is now we're moving and watching the sun actually rise. Okay. Akalakomo, watching it set. Okay. And what that does, okay, here's my graphics for today. I'm so proud of myself. Okay. <laughs> is it sets up? <laughs> yeah, don't quit my day. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it sets up my vertical boundaries. Okay, so I have my horizontal, is all good. Okay, I, I, I know I can see everything coming from my east to the west. And again, that's my horizontal, right? I can, I figure, I am grounded. Okay, and now I'm setting up my boundary above me. Okay, so in the front and in the back of me. So I'm set, I'm flat, my flat land is, is solid and my vertical land above me is also that space above. Okay. Mai kai ko'olau, which we happen to be here on this side of the island. Okay. A kai kona, which is on the other side. Okay, and what this does is we're splitting the earth again in half. Okay, and this time we're running, we already set our vertical line from east to west and a horizontal, and now we're doing a northeast boundary and a southwest boundary, okay? So what are we forming when we do that? We're forming a circle. We're forming our honua. You guys remember our honua? Okay. Mai kapa'a iluna. Okay, where do you guys think iluna is? Oh, we smart Hawaiians, we can. Okay. 
a kapa'a ilalo. Right, right. So that suspended space above needs to also be brought down, okay? And it gives us our broad, our broad boundaries. Okay, sets up our broad boundaries. Pa'ailuna and pa'ailalo is the earth that we walk on. Okay? Mai ka ho'oku'i, okay? That's this right here. We all have our ho'oku'i. Okay. Uh, and one of the terms for ho'oku'i, which is uh, actually our zenith, um, we usually measure when the sun is directly above us. We also do that for the moon as well. And that term is called lolopua because as soon as the sun is on your lolo or the moon is on your lolo or actually the Orion's belt is on your lolo, then you are able to pua aku, things will pua, pua mai. Bo, uh, no, for all, anything that, well, for the sun, for the moon and Orion's belt. Because Orion's belt rises due east and sets due west. Okay, so when it's directly above us, like it's going to be uh, next month, then good mana time, which is why we had our finish with Makahiki and moving on to the ku season. Okay, okay, no, that's another presentation. All right. <laughs> okay, so that's abroad. Then we have our halavai again. Okay, we have our halavai. Okay, so again, what is the imagery here? The imagery, oh, oh yeah, this is for people who don't know what that means. Ho'okui, directly above us. Okay. And halavai is that section right there, where the earth and the sky, halavai, meets. Okay, and that movement, that vertical and that horizontal is actually called your meridian. Okay. And what's important about that, oh, here we go, see? So um, this is what we're setting up right now. All those different things that we talked about, the movement of things, east, west, north, south, our verticals, our horizontals, even things below us that we cannot see, all of that is what our uh, chant is setting up, our sacred space. Because women set up the sacred space. That's what Haumea does. Okay, how Mea does that. Okay, so are we, are we following? Are we following? You guys have any questions? Okay, so it's a circle. Now if we were to look at our own kino, our kino, all of us represent that. Okay, from our pico, we get our horizontal. We also have our vertical pico, right? Because you have your ma'i, which is one, and your manava, which is another right? And you stick out your hands, okay? And you put your back to the sun when it's rising, and then you have your actual ver um, directionals uh, horizontal, and as it rises and sits, right, and goes around and keeps going and going, you're creating that circle that's above, below, around you, okay? That is extremely important. Those meridians, all of that, that meridian, that is our Haumea, Okay, we embody that Haumea. The, and Haumea is really the potential. The potential for something to happen. That's her job. That's one of her things to do. Okay. One of the things that she does is uh, this thing called Kaheya Haumea. Everybody say that. Kaheya Haumea. Uh, sorry, never have on Wahine, so I had to go for Brada who was illegally taking fish over here. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, you guys, uh, the term hay, you guys know what hay means? What does it mean? Sna and snare, what else? A to string game. A string game, very good. Ooh, ooh, yeah, remember that. Okay, very good. What else? Okay, race, all right. So, um, uh, and then we take that same, those same terms, hey, and we put it onto another structure that's built called the heiau. What do you guys think is happening on the heiau? You know, we, we don't really look, because uh, we get all like, ooh, there's Lua Kiri, ooh, watch out, everybody dies, and you sacrifice, whatever, no. No, everything has to be sacrificed at some point, okay? And so you can ponder that. But what we're doing 
on the heyo, okay, as we ensnare me, ao, time is also ao, or current, or energy, heyo. That's what's being happen when it's placed in a spot where all of these different meridians gather. We are creating our cosmos. Our universe is being created on that heyo, okay? So that we can actually create that potential, the proper energy that needs to happen so we can move action, okay? Um, the Hea Homea is actually a net that she took care of. And what she would do is she would cast it up into the sky and she could plot things, okay? Homea plots things. She plots genealogy, right? That's her thing. She she's very, very interested in who her children and descendants are going to be paired with. And let me tell you, when you get to a certain point where your daughter is old enough to have a baby, oh yeah, you're real interested. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're like, oh no, no, baby, no, not that one, <laughs> right? Okay, <laughs> we're very interested because it's really about us continuing our homia. So, okay, so she's that one who creates the potential, okay? She takes different lines, okay? So if you imagine the image of an actual net and it's bringing together four different strands and what do you have in the middle there? Is a hipu yet or not? Okay, that is the imagery of potential. That is the honua that's being created for the proper thing to happen. You guys see that? Okay, so uh, one of the things that she does is she casts that net up into the sky and she plots out all the stars in terms of time, okay? It's providing the potential for all of us to move forward or do what we need to be done. Once your site is established and that sacred space is established, okay? We see it all over the place in the world. Everything does it. Okay, naturally, uh, and uh, I like to use um, the imagery of the spider web, which is actually the perfect imagery for that, that hay, okay? In this case, this um, uh, spider, which is actually an endemic spider, uh, she's into chaos, she likes chaos, okay? Because in chaos, which is a huli here, there is clarity, and, there's, and actually, there's organization in it too, Okay, it's organized, the chaos. I don't know about you all, but I love chaos. Okay, we have other spiders, endemic spiders that like to actually have organization. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and actually, if we all look around the room, we can figure out who's the chaotic spider <laughs> and who is the one that's a little organized. Okay, okay, so you see where all these nodes actually meet? Okay, where all those things meet, that's where potential lies. Okay, same with this guy, this uh, web here. You see where all the water drops actually form? They form where the web meets. Okay, that's potential in its finest. And then you have man, us guys, trying to uh, actually uh, replicate that. We replicate it on the heiau that we construct. Uh, we replicate it in the net that is stretched over the umeke. Okay, as there's water on the inside, so we can plot out the stars. Okay, because each of those hipu'u, those potentials, will line up with stars that are up in the sky. Okay, that's the ipu maoloha that, that is often found in different ceremonies. Okay, so here's the imagery. So the imagery is that, did you know Haumea is actually one string? Did you know when you make a net, it's actually one string? You guys know that, yeah? I didn't know that until I actually, I thought it was a whole bunch of things. No, 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 it's the same net. It's the same string that is tied, 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 tied. Those potentials, okay, and it's all tied. So it's the perfect imagery for genealogy. Yeah, it's the perfect imagery for time. Time also does that, right? For time in your life, 
time in your uh, kupuna's lives, time in your children's lives. There's always something that gets together and creates that potential, usually in chaos, which is awesome. OK. OK, so now do we understand that? That she's, that's what Haumea is? Do we get that? OK, so now let's, here's wrapping this your brain around something. Is, um, you know the eggs that we're born with as women? Those are the eggs that our mother born us with, that our grandmother had, that the grandmother before that the grandmother had. So you know when they say in the Kumulipo that the coral polyp is my ancestor? Well, yes, it is. Because when that coral polyp first came out of darkness into light, that potential egg for me and you and you and you and you was in that coral polyp. Oh, talk about like string theory. <laughs> yeah? So that just tells us that when we are a potent, our bodies are potential to have babies, yeah, it's extremely important to take care of your body because you're not taking care of just you. You're taking care of all the ones coming after you because somebody above you took care of you <laughs> before that. So that's a good imagery for Haumea as well. That's why we care about when our daughters are, oh, yeah, no, no, that's no bueno. Okay, this guy's bueno, try him. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you know, one time I was in the car with my, oh, she's going to be so embarrassed because it's going to be on TV, but, you know, one time I was driving in the car and then we stopped at some stoplight and then, you know, this kind of muscly young guy, you know, I mean, all rip, everything goes across the street. And I was like, ooh, yeah, brother is hot. And my daughter was like, yeah, brother is hot. And now I, I had this little epiphany like, whoa, we're both. My daughter, okay, yeah, weird. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Anyway, poor thing, and the guy's just walking across the street without a shirt. He has no idea what's going on in the car. Okay, anyway. All right, so coming back to the idea of the heiau, okay? Setting sacred space. That's exactly, oh, I got to, am I good on time? I don't even know. Oh, yeah, I'm good, 15 minutes. Okay, yeah, so um, setting our sacred space. One of the things that most people don't really realize is how important a woman's role is on the heiau, on the uh, mapele heiau, and actually on the luakini heiau. Do you guys know that nothing can happen unless us guys, we women, go there and actually pikai the place? We're the ones who set the sacred space. If we don't set the sacred space, they cannot continue with their ceremony. Okay, and it's, um, it's actually documented several different ways. Uh, Malo talks about it, EE e. talks about it, Fernando talks about it. You know, you see it different places and things like that. So uh, one of the things that we did as women before the ceremonies would occur, okay, we would come out and we would pikai the place, okay? We would set the sacred space by creating the world first, the foundation, that potential, before the universe can be brought down onto the heiau for that time and that space that men need to do their thing, okay? Their thing, which is also important as well. It's extremely important. So it's a symbiotic relationship that we have. They cannot move forward without us, okay? So I hope to um, put in somebody's brain here to instill that, um, that uh, ceremony again back on all of those potentials, yes? Because we create the potential. They can't have it unless we do it, unless we go there and um, set the space. The other thing that we do is this thing called, it's part of a ceremony called kaiola or kaiolo. It depends. Sometimes there's an okina and sometimes there isn't. So I don't know, it might be a Hawaii Island dialect or a Maui, you know. I'm all down with that, it's all good. Okay, no judgment. All right, and what this ceremony is, is uh, setting up the space for a sacred activity as well, uh, divi dividing the earth into its proper parts so that the men can come. And you know, we wash down the heiau, uh, and I'm gonna talk about how we did that because you guys are all gonna learn a ceremony before you leave, okay? Because uh, that's just why do this talk if you're not going to go home and learn something to do. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're gonna um, they set the, sp uh, the space. They create the, the potential, the potentiality. And then the other thing that women do is we dress the akua. Okay, that's big deal, gang. 
Okay, we dress the akua, not the men, the women. So we put the malo on the, on the ki'i, or yeah, usually it's the malo. And that's where the term kai olo or kai olo comes from. Uh, it's this white kappa that the women of the Haleo Papa created, specific, and it had uh, certain dimensions that it had to be in, had to be white, and then they would dress, dress the, um, the akua, the mo'i actually. The, and the mo'i is your, um, your po manu, or your uh, big huge um, uh, ohi'a log that becomes the akua, akua nui on the, on the hill. Okay? Are we good? Okay, so one of the things that, um, that they do as they go on the heiau are there's several ways to, to uh, set the stage, so to speak, okay? Several ways. Uh, and there's all these different terms that have to do with setting that stage. Okay, the first is pikai. Everybody say pikai. Pikai. Pikai is when you go to the ocean with your apu or your bowl and you just go there and you scoop it up, okay? And now that bowl has its potential. It's the salt water. It's the same salt water that we have in our amniotic fluid while we have our, sac our most sacred time in our entire life is when we sit in our mother's womb, okay? And when we sit in our mother's womb, we are surrounded by the ocean. Then when we're born, poof, out comes the ocean. Then there's you, and our life is filled with trying to get back in that sacred space again, yeah? <laughs> By creating the pikai, and that's why we feel really good when we go to the ocean all day, you know, we feel really good. So that's pikai. So you can do it by getting the ocean or by getting fresh water, because not everybody lived in the, um, next to the ocean as today. Uh, and what you would do is you have your fresh water and your pakai. Here's my props. Okay, your pakai. And then uh, you mix it. So uh, I think I'll make some. Okay, it's real simple. Okay. Oh, but before I do that, add the uh, pakai. Uh, the other thing that we also do is PY. Everybody say PY. PY. PY is pure water. Pure water that comes from several places. One is from a spring that is not interrupted by man at all. And when I say interrupted, I mean diverted or built upon or moved out of its original spot. Something that hoos out of the water or out of the earth or oozes out of the earth or pukas out of the earth. Okay, those are the things that we look for. Okay. Or we collect the water that's been collected on the leaf of the taro early in the morning. That is pure water. That's P Y. Uh, that, that is Y in its pure form. And then the other pure form is the coconut. Okay, we also use coconut water to P Y. Okay. All right. Okay, but so I like mine with some salt. Okay, so we add some pakai in here. This one comes from Kanaloa. Oh, I forgot to say, one of the things that you see with Haumea is that she's partnered up with a lot of people. Partnered up with a lot of people. She's partnered up with Kanaloa, okay, and the islands are born. She's partnered up with um, Wakea, then politics are born, okay. She's partnered up with Kane, then ceremonies are born, okay? She's partnered up with Moi Moi Ali'i, and eruptions are born, okay? That's her thing, that's why she's the foundation, okay? She is the foundation, she's creating the potentiality for the things that come after her. That's why she's hooked up with all those different people. Okay, okay, so here we go with our pikai, okay. Then we have, just so you guys know, um, there's other terms. There's pikai kai. Pikai kai usually means that you have to actually go into the ocean and get the water. Okay. There's pikai kea. Everybody say pikai kea. Pikai kea. And pikai kea is that, you know that uh, when the waves break and there's the foam, 
That's peak Ikea. So you're gonna scoop that water up and you're gonna look for the part that, uh, the water that doesn't have a lot of sand in it. So Garen's Barbarians, they didn't go to a beach for it. They probably went off a pulley to get it because you don't want it to be helmeted with sand. Yeah, okay, so peak Ikea. Okay, next one is Pikai Olena, everybody. Pikai Olena, one more time, Pikai Olena. And Pikai Olena is the same thing right here. You get your water, your pure water, you get your pakai, and you um, either chew and spit into the water, um, the Olena, or you smash it, okay, you smash it, or you chop it up really good, and you put it, or you just put a slice, depends. No judgment on how you all do your practices, okay? Main thing, you get the right accoutrements, okay? Okay, <laughs> so you put that in your, uh, your water and now you have pikai olena. Pikai olena is actually how, um, is actually the, the choice of the matter when it comes to washing down the heiau, okay? Pikai olena. What color is olena? Orange. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, orange, yellow, okay? What color are female deities? Yellow. What color is Haumea's flower when it's born? Yellow. What, the, what color does it turn into at the end of the day? Orange. Yeah, okay. Oh, see all these little markers that our kupuna left for us so we know. Okay, what kind of colors are mo'o? Yellow. Okay, yeah. All right, okay. So, pikai olena. And that's how you would put that in your water. Okay, and I just wanted to briefly talk about pikai kai, which I did earlier. That means it has to be... Uh, total ocean water. We also, we also use Mimi. If you look it up in a dictionary, you know, that's my Paipala Hemolele, by the way, Gengi. Every day, okay? Pick it up, look at it. Wow, I learned so much. Mahalo nui to those people who put that thing together because I would know nothing today, okay? So in there, um, they would, there are certain, it says there are certain people, individuals who would use Mimi because what color is it? Yeah, okay, and what kinds of things don't bad aqua, you know, the bad whatever, juju that's out there, they don't, you know, you throw the mimi and all that sort of thing. Okay, so there, it says that there's a little footnote, okay? Uh, the final thing I talked about was the kapukai, yeah, earlier I talked about that. If you're going to actually uh, do ava ceremony or any kind of thing uh, with an item or an accoutrement, I better look that word up, I might have just made that word up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so it might mean like, salt and pepper and ketchup for all I know. <laughs> okay, anyways, um, <clears throat> kapukai is you take, you, you take the root of the ava, or the chewed ava, it depends, and you dump, dunk it in your water that's been mixed with, with salt or with uh, fresh salt water, okay? Kapu kapukai is the same thing. Uh, sometimes uh, there's a difference between kapu kapukai or kapukai and hiuai. You guys know what is hiuai? What is that? You go in the ocean, and when do you go in the ocean? Anytime, every time? Huh? When? Okay, okay, all right, no judgment, whenever, that's good, whatever. <clears throat> um, but what I'm, uh, I guess what I'm getting at is hiuvai is specific to actual uh, makahiki ceremonies <coughs> and also to la'au lapa'au ceremonies. When you uh, want to pow your, you know, different kinds of ma'i, you want it to ola, okay. The term, the proper term for going into the ocean to release all your negativity is actually kapu kapu kai. You know that? Okay, anyway, um, so these are the different things. Now the actual work that the person would do, since I have two minutes left to tell you, okay, is they would take the pikai, you know, and they would throw the water, right? You would throw the water in all the different corners, okay? Right, all the different corners, you're gonna set up the space Okay, sometimes when you pikai people, you go mai kapo'o, akahi'u, mai kekihi, akekihi, ualele, uanoa. So what you're doing is mai kapo'o, akahi'u, which is your feet, mai kekihi, akekihi. You guys remember when we set up our world? Okay, we just set it up on that person. Okay, so we do that. Ualele, uanoa, so we made our world. Okay, then we would do the same thing to a place. Okay, go to all the different corners, to the opening, to the closing part, to the front, to the back. Okay, we would go to the lele, 
and wash it down, full on wash it down, pick it up and wash, 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 wash. Okay, uh, one of the things we try to do is turn the llama into a yellow color, you know, the lele that they use. We'll try and wash it down till it actually turns yellow. Because why? What is the color of the akua homia? Okay, and so this is a traditional pikai chant right here. Okay, you guys can see them. So here we go. Everybody, let's all read the first line. E na kua e haire pu. Okay, you're calling your gods. You remember na auma kua mai kala hiki akala kau mai kahoku. Okay, we're calling our gods. We're setting up them to come. Okay, gather. That's a haile pu means. Okay, next line. E kane e kanaloa e haumea e. Okay, so who are you calling? Kane, the greater god, Kanaloa, who's the other god that has to do with the exact opposite. And who is their wife? Haumea. Okay. All right. E ho mai ka ohe. Let's, everybody. E ho mai ka ohe. One of the ceremonies you need to have is a ohe to chop, 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 to cut, cut, cut all the bad haumea, any kind of haumea, any kind of things. You dip it in your pikai and ch -ch 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 pikai olena. Okay. The imagery here is you're also the ohe. Okay, next lines and a uh, oki a uh, kaha a uh, wahi kahaumia a uh, olepu. Olepu means so your um, your oki you're cutting it a uh, kaha you're cutting it wahi kahaumia you're um, you're bundling it up and your olepu means to discard it. Okay, here we go and. Eia ka olena e holoi i ka hale. Okay, the world is a hale, our, our bodies are a hale. Okay, so after you do that, you're going to set up your sacred space from the top. Here we go. Mai ka hikina, a ke komohana. Mai ka la kau, a ka la komo. Mai kai ko olau, a kai kona. Mai ka paa i luna, a ka paa i lalo. Mai ka hookui, a ka halawai, e halawai a pau a mae mae, a mama ua noa. Does that, do those lines sound familiar? Oh, who you think belong, who does this ceremony belong to, you think? Haumea. Yeah, very good. So I go back to our uh, original question who is Haumea? Yeah, the potential, and who are we? Haumea. We are Haumea, we are the potential. Who creates the earth, Haumea, and who creates the Lahui? Us, okay, so therefore, we are very, very cognizant of who our daughters hook up with. <laughs> <laughs> and if he's junk, we're gonna learn him well. We're gonna teach him well, yeah? So he's not junk. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and that's it. That's all I have. Any questions? <coughs> yeah, upohu. Kilipo ipoi.